Yo, what's good ladies and gentlemen, welcome to What If Deku Was Miles Morales. Now, you guys are probably like, hmm, I see what you did there, Zether. Posting this right when the movie came out, you cheesy little marketing genius, you, and yes, that's exactly what I did. So go ahead and leave a like just because your boy's a marketing genius. <laughs> now nah, I'm totally kidding. But seriously, if you're watching this, it's probably because you're thinking of Miles Morales because of the new movie. So come on now, you got to admit it worked a little bit. Now, nah, but for real, main focus of the video. This video, What If Deku, Miles Morales, pretty much I'm just going to cover what I think would happen. It's going to be really, really fan -ficky. not exactly what would actually happen, considering that what would really happen would just be Deku slamming everybody. So I had to make it a bit more interesting. However, today's video will be having a little bit of a feature in it, and that is going to be the legend Izukage himself. Go ahead and check his channel out. Links will be down below in the description. That said, enjoy. Hey Ross, sauce it up. This whole story is going to be starting off the day of the quirk doctor. Now, Deku would have been playing with his mom, playing the little All Might game, that scene that we all know and love in MHA, the most adorable scene, by the way. And Deku would then look at his mother as he would say, you think we could go to the quirk doctor? Do ya, do ya? And Inka would just look at him and be like, okay, Izuku, let's go. She picks him up, tosses bro in the back seat, and then would drive her way towards the doctor, right? Once Izuku would arrive, he'd be so excited. He'd be like, I can't wait. But Inko, she has a bit of a different expression on her face. She's worried. Deku, however, would still be looking forward to this experience. And eventually they would make their way to the door. About an hour would pass. A very long wait. That's what I used to get when I was a kid. So that's what Deku's going to get. And about an hour would happen. Deku would finally be attended to. Eventually, once Deku would end up arriving, the Quirk Doctor would then sit down with them, look through his charts, and say, Not gonna happen, kid. And Deku would feel crushed. This would be the same scene in the anime, and Dr. Ujiko would go on to break Deku's dreams forever. There's no mending this, and Izuku just feels absolutely terrible. There is no fixing this. However, what does end up happening is that Inko would kind of just try to consolate Deku, but... Deku just, he feels broken. He would arrive home and immediately start watching all of his All Might videos and Inko would be watching from the side of the door just saddened at the sight of her son being completely feeling bad for himself and feeling heartbroken. She would come inside, tears in her eyes and begin to apologize to Deku profusely, saying that she's so sorry. Eventually, the next day at school, Deku ends up arriving and upon telling people that he's quirkless, everybody would start making fun of him. One kid in particular would would come up and be like, <laughs> what a quirkless nerd. Let's call him Deku. And everybody would be like, yeah, Deku it is. Let's call him that. But suddenly, a certain blonde haired girl would come in and her name would be Katsumi. And she would then say, hey, leave him alone. He is my best friend after all. So you mess with him, you mess with me. Suddenly, the boys would then be like, ooh, you got a crush on him? And she'd say, no, but do you have a crush on explosions? As she blows up a couple of explosions in her hands, and the kids would immediately all begin to back away, realizing that this is a battle that they're absolutely not going to win. Eventually, after this, she would go over towards Izuku and say she doesn't care if he's quirkless or not, that if at the end of the day, she's always going to be his friend, and she'll have his back. Deku would smile at the thought of that, and eventually, years would pass. They end up growing closer as friends, and eventually, after years, Katsumi and Deku would end up building a very cool friend relationship. They'd be best friends, and Deku would have sort of a bit of a crush on Katsumi, but she never kind of realized it. She was too focused on becoming a hero, and way too focused on being her tomboy-like persona. Bakugo was never born in this version, and instead was replaced with Katsumi. Same quirk, kind of same personality, considering that if you grow up in the same home, it tends to stay the same. However, she is a girl, so it's going to be a little bit more, a lot more feminine, actually. Sorry. And eventually, one day when all of the students are just chilling, right? They're all having a fun day. They're all just vibing and stuff. 
Deku would be on his laptop or iPad thing and he would be watching a Spider-Man video, one of his most popular heroes in the charts and one of the most popular heroes in the US. Katsumi would ask him why he's watching him and Deku would say he's fascinating. As it would be at this current moment that a weird little spider would crawl up Deku, bite him on the neck and Deku just straight passes out. He immediately just straight drops to the floor and then paramedics would be called. Now, I'm going to put it like this. The spider crawled down his stomach, and as it was crawling, Deku fell and splattered the stomach on impact, crushing it underneath the force of his weight. And Izuku from here would be brought immediately to an ambulance-like thing, and they would rush him to the hospital, where eventually Katsumi, um, Bakugo's mom, or Katsumi's mom, sorry, and Inka would all just be there waiting for Izuku. Eventually, when Izuku comes to... It would be the next day, and he realizes that his mom was asleep by his bedside. Katsumi was already at school, seeing as she had to go there, and Mitsuki was at home just chilling, making breakfast, right? But once Izuku woke up, at 7 years old, mind you, he would ask his mom what happened. And she would say, honey, uh, you passed out randomly. Doctors couldn't figure out what was wrong. I mean, they said you were fine, but... I, I, look at you. you, you were unconscious for like an entire 24 hours. Izuku would say really and eventually you know he kind of stands up very quickly as Inka would go over towards him and be like Izuku don't don't don't, don't hurt yourself but Deku would stand up and say mom I I feel I feel great and she's like what, what do you mean and Deku just he jumps up into the air a lot higher than normal humans and he'd say I feel better than ever as from here doctors would enter the room and noticing that Deku was jumping as high as he is, they'd be like, you have a very unusual vertical kid. Maybe, maybe this is your quirk. Eventually, Izuku would be taken to a different quirk doctor. And here, they would go and do an analysis on Deku, seeing if maybe the cause of him passing out was him unlocking his quirk. Eventually, they can't really determine that that's the case, but Deku has supernatural abilities, so they have to assume so. And eventually... He would be told that according to all of the tests they did, a lot of his abilities seem to be very, very, very similar to a superhero in America by the name of Spider-Man. However, it seems that Izuku has a couple extra abilities that they didn't know that he might have or that he might not even have. And Izuku would ask, what are they? As from here, they'd say, well, Inko, your son's powers range from web shooting from his hands uh, invisibility, camouflage, electricities, ex explosions, electricity webs, regeneration, superhuman reflexes, and wall crawling. He can also paralyze his enemies, and he has a bit of a of a tingly sensation that warns him of threats, sort of like a danger sense, but Spider-Man calls it a spidey sense. Super strength, and it almost seems like Izuku is gonna his cells age weird maybe some sort of long lasting aging quirk where he might stay in his prime for a while but we're completely unsure as of now this is all the data we can collect check back in in about four years and we can analyze and uh we can run another analysis on his powers for now here's the phone number of the superhero spider-man maybe get into contact and from there you can maybe potentially get deku's powers in check she would call the number and eventually Peter would answer saying, Oh, hey, been waiting for a call from you. Yeah, I already booked you guys a bunch of tickets to come over here for a couple of months. So feel free to bring the kid by. Heard he had a couple of powers similar to me. And I think it'd be a really cool experience if he trained with me, right? Inko would be like, yeah, sure. And eventually Izuku would be taken all the way over to the US, New York City, in fact, where Spider-Man would pretty much train him and would show him the ropes to what it's like to be Spider-Man. Izuku would pick up a bunch of his traits, and a lot of things would happen with him. I know I said he would go for a couple of months, but scratch that. How about Izuku just dips for like another seven years? You know, he was seven when he got his power, so seven years. And Deku would just train for a constant seven years, just training and having fun and learning the ins and outs of heroic agencies and getting really really accustomed to the you know to the american side of heroics and deku would think it's awesome it's great and once all of this training would finally be over 
he would come back an absolute badass. Not only that, but Izuku can speak fluent English, and he also would have been able to be given his own hero outfit by Spider-Man himself. Deku decided that the one that he wanted to go to go with was a blacked out Spider-Man costume. And Deku thinks it's absolutely awesome. Think the one in the thumbnail. Anyways though, eventually Deku would end up returning back towards Japan and on the day that he would arrive from the train, he would immediately realize that there's an explosion off in the distance. Izuku immediately would shoot webs towards one of the highest buildings and fling himself as close as he possibly could to the area. Once there, Izuku would realize that somebody was in trouble and they were fighting a villain. Deku wanting to act quickly would be like, hopefully, you know, there's a hero here because Spider-Man did tell him not to use his powers in public, and since he hasn't ever fought a real villain, Izuku didn't exactly want to jump in, but the moment that Izuku looked at the person who was there, he immediately recognized the blonde hair, the explosions, and even the screams coming from over there. That's, that's Katsumi, he would think, and immediately his body would move. It's almost as if on instinct, his body would say, go, save her. And that's exactly what Izuku would do. His body would move without him telling it what to do. And Izuku would blitz in, grabbing a hold of Katsumi as Deku would rip her out of the sludge villain immediately, tossing her aside before he then electrocutes the sludge villain. And even though the sludge villain can't feel physical pain, like getting punched, he can definitely feel what it's like to get a bunch of volts strapped down your entire body. So the sludge villain would immediately be taken out after this and eventually after this would all end up going down, Izuku would end up turning towards the direction of all the cameramen and all the people who are nearby. And even Katsumi would look at Izuku and be like, Izuku? Deku would look at her and say, what's up Katsumi? Been a long time, huh? And she'd say, wow Deku, you, you're totally different. When I heard that you got a quirk, I believed it, but... When I heard you going to US, I was pretty sad. I didn't think it was going to be quite like this. And Izuku says, trust me, I got a lot more to show you. Here, how about you come by my place later tonight? As you know, he would grab on to Katsumi and would fling all the way up into the air as he would get them both out of that situation before the reporters could even interview them. Following this, he would drop her down, say goodbye before then walking home. However, on his way there, All Might would pull up on Deku and be like, <laughs> as he, you know, goes into a small might form. And then he would be offered one for all. Now, what do you guys think Deku's going to say? All right, I'll, I'll give you two seconds. Ding, 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 ding. No, he would say no. He'd be like, look, All Might, the power sounds great and all, but no thanks. I think it'd be better if you let somebody else have it. After all, there's no point in having a broken hero when you could have two broken heroes. As All Might would think about this and be like, you're right, I, I should maybe give it to a corkless kid who has no hope at all. And eventually, Izuku would say, well, I wasn't saying all that. I have a friend. She might be interested in giving the quirk. And honestly, if I know her as well as I do, then she might be up to the challenge. All Might would say, well, I'd love to meet this individual. And Izuki would say, great. How about we meet at Degoma Beach? As All Might would say, sure. And Izuki would say, all right, All Might, see you there. As, as he would just wave and he would make his way home. Once arriving, he shuts the door and Inko and Asashi Midoriya would be waiting for Deku with a welcome home cake as they would throw a little bit of a party and Katsumi would already be at his home. Deku would then begin to tell her everything that happened about All Might and all that stuff and in private, obviously. And he would then tell her that, you know, she could maybe get the quirk that Deku denied it, but that Katsumi should definitely get it. I mean, All Might is her idol after all, and it would give her more of a chance of becoming the number one hero of Japan someday. And Izuku would say that he's planning to be something of a number one hero of the US when Spider-Man retires. And Katsumi would be like, whatever, you and your dreams. As Deku would laugh and, you know, hold the back of his head. As from here, Katsumi would go on and pretty much just tell Deku that, you know, she'd love to meet him. The very next day, they would end up pretty much just training together. And once All Might gets to know Katsumi and the work ethic that she has and the way that she presents himself, All Might would just be enthralled. He would think that it's great and that she's a worthy successor. As from here, they would start training and they would pretty much end up having to live up to the, 
to the to the stress of like training with all might and izuku also i need to mention didn't want to take the quirk because he didn't want to live with the stress of living up to two people's legacies considering that he has the strength of his spider-man and he's a little bit better than him he thinks he doesn't want to have to deal with the fact that he's going to be just like spider-man and just like oh my that would just be too much weight on his shoulder the comparisons would be insane so giving that to katsumi it sounds like a lot more fun after a bunch of training together they would all be very very powerful and after all the training that deku would do with all might and all this stuff he would be insanely strong give or take about 70 percent of one for all in terms of strength if i had to tell you guys what it was at and katsumi after receiving one for all after a couple of months would be able to use 15 percent of its abilities eventually once that pretty much happens she would train a bit more and end up getting that up to 20% by the time that the, um, the, um, the thing would be clean and by the time that she would continue training her body. Eventually, we would get to the point where we finally get to the UA entrance exam and on this particular day, they would both be dropped off by Mitsuki, who would take a picture of the two of them begrudgingly and eventually they would make their way inside. Going on to sit together and take the written portion, Izuku and Katsumi would both easily pass the test and as soon as this would happen, Deku would then go on to go to a different portion than Katsumi. Each of them would wish each other good luck and eventually they would both find themselves in a different portion where in Izuku's separate portion of the robot exam, Deku would go absolutely ballistic, going off and getting a grand total of 320 robot points because not only does he defeat the robots, but he also ends up getting an additional 50 to 60 rescue points when he saves Araraka during the catastrophic event of the zero pointer almost crushing Araraka and splattering her in the middle of an exam and how would that go down you may ask well let me explain so as soon as the thing started izuku immediately used his webs to shoot over everybody and the first three robots that were there deku would have just immediately shot electric webs at them causing them to malfunction and eventually izuku using his web slinging abilities would go to the highest point that he could find before finding the mass like just mass amounts of robots izuku shooting webs at them would then pull them up into the air and just smash them with his fists. Following this, Deku would use acrobatic-like abilities and fling himself down to the ground before then just blitzing in and preparing to absolutely demolish these robots one by one. Eventually, after a bit of time would pass, a bunch of rumbling would go down and Izuku would look up to see the zero pointer. Once seeing this, he would scoff to himself saying he's not, that's not his problem, until eventually his spider senses go off and he realizes that someone's in danger. He sees Uraraka pretty far away and eventually Izuku begins using his webs to catapulting his way all the way over there, throwing the rubble off of her and then using a bunch of webs, like shooting so much webs on, on, on the side of four buildings, like connecting them together to make like a bit of a trampoline like thing to stop the zero pointer from being able to crush them just long enough for Izuku to get himself and Uraraka out of the way and eventually land on top of a building leading Izuku to think to himself that he might as well take this thing out as he would jump up in the air and reeling his fist back would punch the zero pointer square in the face as he would send it flying back and then ultimately Izuku using his hand would then slam it on the zero pointer as it's falling and electrocute it causing a malfunction and a and a chain of explosions during the dur, uh through the entire body to completely go off izuku then using his webs to swing away as after this everybody would just be in complete shock but deku would ultimately end up swinging away from ua and making his way home going on to text katsumi that he's pretty sure he just broke some sort of ua record maybe and katsumi would say that she did pretty well too as she'd be like thanks for asking izuku would sound like a little bit of a worried face emoji but ultimately they would both end up finally going to class once they end up going there for their first day of ua high they would both just get ready with their outfits and they'd they'd, they'd honestly just be vibing like deku and, and katsumi would both be taken to school with inko and they would have even gone out for like like a breakfast like to denny's or something like that or like like a like uh like uh, crackers cafe actually crackers cafe i like that place better um no yeah they go there and you have a great breakfast they get absolutely down and then following that they finally end up making their way to school where it would be on this particular day that they end up having to unfortunately take the quirk apprehension test 
Why? Because Aizawa feels like making them take that instead of the, uh, instead of the, what is it? The orientation? Yeah, orientation, right. They end up making their way to the class and once inside, Katsumi would immediately end up arguing with Ida once she puts one of her feet up on the desk. Ida, as soon as he would start chirping towards Katsumi, she would immediately tell him to buzz off and that why is he acting like such a stick in the mud, as Izuku would say to get lost and that you know he shouldn't be bothering uh, uh, somebody like her at all, as Ida would say that it's not his intention to bother the lady but look at what she's doing, she's disrespecting Yue property. And then eventually, Uraraka would walk in and she would begin to thank Deku for saving her life. Katsumi would give Deku this death stare and Izuku would be like, what? Like, I'm supposed to save people. And Katsumi would be like, whatever. As from here, she'd be salty the entire day. And eventually, once Aizawa would tell them about the test that they have to do, Katsumi would go all out since she's feeling kind of enraged and also annoyed at the fact that she feels kind of like she's in competition with this girl. And not, not in competition, but she feels the fact that she feels jealous with this girl is making her upset. Because the feeling of jealousy isn't something that Katsumi usually feels. So it's making her feel rather uncomfortable. Eventually though, after this would end up happening, they both end up getting miraculously insanely good scores on this thing. And because of that, what would pretty much end up going down is they both get first and second place. With the rest of the listings going down just like they would have encanted. In the original version of this, Mineta would probably get expelled. But considering that I'm the one making this and I like Mineta as a character, just because of his purpose for comic relief, I'ma let him stay and say that just like in the original, Aizawa lets everybody pass. Eventually, however, two days of school would pass, and after lunch, they would all find themselves back in the classroom. Katsumi would ask Izuku what his plans are for later today, and Deku and her would just kind of be talking amongst themselves, low-key flirting, which would lead Kaminari and Mineta to watch them creepily from across the room, and Katsumi, once noticing this, would shoot an explosion before saying, I'll kill you if you look at me like that again. And from here, they both immediately look away, and Izuku would laugh, going into a frenzy of just like, losing it as as like he would laugh so hard that like his food would come out of his nose and spray on, on Katsumi. She then begins to chase him around the cafeteria and eventually a pro hero would end up arriving that being Aizawa who would flare his quirk and cancel Katsumi's and Deku's which wouldn't actually work and then he'd be like stop messing around and ultimately Izuku gets away with his life on this particular day. However, after this would happen, Izuku would end up walking in the classroom where an All Might, when All Might would suddenly burst in the room. He'd immediately start everything off by saying, I am here, walking in through the door like a normal person. As everybody would watch as All Might enters the classroom and he would then go on to tell everybody how, you know, he's excited to be their teacher and how the clothes make the pro so they better get suited up. As he would click a button and all their costumes would be revealed. Eventually, Izuku would put on the Miles Morales costume and take off his mask, Katsumi looking at him and thinking that he looks so cool. Kind of a bit hot actually. Actually. And the other girls would actually agree as well. They'd be checking him out, but Katsumi, she's not having it. She immediately would say, G get your eyes focused on something else. As you know, the only one that wasn't paying attention to Izuku was Momo, who was oogling at Todoroki. However, as soon as this happens, what would end up going down is that Deku and Bakugo, or sorry, not Bakugo, but Katsumi, would both end up picking names for who their teammates are going to be. And eventually they would realize that they're on each other's team. It seems like fate wants them to always be together for some reason. Eventually, they would be told who they're going to be going up against, and they would actually be going up against a very easy matchup, Momo and Mineta. Strange. Ultimately though, they go through with it, and once they end up starting the battle, they realize that it's easily going to be a one-sided massacre. I mean, Momo's not really going to do anything to them, and Mineta most certainly is, and he's way too scared of Katsumi herself to even try to stand up to the dynamic duo that is Katsumi with One For All and Izuku with Miles Morales' abilities. So. What I'm going to say is that Izuku would decide to take the easy route and ultimately would make his way towards the direction of, of, of the room 
through the back and just tell Katsumi to create some sort of distraction. And she'd say, oh, I can do that, all right. Flaring explosions in her hand, she would immediately go yelling through the entire building as Mineta and Momo would both kind of be scared. Mineta using a bunch of sticky balls on the door to keep it closed shut and Momo creating some a bunch of different locks on the door so that she can't come in. But ultimately, as soon as she arrives at the door, she would begin exploding each and every single one of them, being like, you here, you here, you in here. But ultimately, considering that they're not, she'd ultimately be like, ah, come on, where are you? As from here, you know, she would hear a bit of commotion inside of another room, smirk, and shoot a massive explosion, leading Deku to use his invisibility as he would be outside wall crawling, open the window, and make his way towards the bomb, as he would reveal his, uh, as he would unveil his invisibility status, and immediately All Might would say, Hero Team wins! As Katsumi had picked Mineta up, and was about to start, like, messing with him and beating him up, but luckily, he was saved by the bell. Kind of like in those like um, early 2000 movies where bullies would like beat people up and then like the bell would save them or something like that. But no, yeah, once that would happen, they would ultimately get destroyed and back with all the students, they would ask who the MVP was. They'd say that it was actually Katsumi considering she created the distraction and Deku's quirk is incredible. They'd ask Izuku how many powers does he have exactly and izuku would say that a magician can never reveal his secrets katsumi walking right by him smacking him in the head and saying there are allies heroes they are supposed to know what your powers are she would then explain what his abilities are and izuku would be like ouch as from here she would like she would like make a low-key like flirty remark but it would also be a little bit like like hate love and eventually they would all just look at them as they would think to themselves that they kind of act a little bit like a married couple even all my who has been training with them for months would notice that and he'd be hoping that something between them was to happen already Eventually, what would pretty much end up going down is that they would all go home, and on the same day, All Might would have handed them each permission slips to sign with their parents, saying that if they're allowed to even join the USJ arc, which is right around the corner. And everybody's parents would easily go on to sign this, and eventually, all of the students from UA would all be allowed to go into UA and do the USJ event. So, once this would happen, we would end up having the USJ arc. And the way that I see this all going down is in a bit of a strange manner, actually. I think that the way that this all would go down is that Izuku, once he begins making his way into the building, his spider senses would just be going off like crazy. I definitely see Izuku like wondering what in the world is going down and just being like, this, like, 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 like seriously, what is going on? Ultimately, though, this would lead Izuku to looking towards the direction of Aizawa and just being like, stop. As everybody would stop right before they enter the, 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 the area, and Izuku would say, Aizawa, listen to me very carefully. I have a danger sense quirk aspect to my abilities, and I have a feeling that we're not alone inside of there. It's going off like crazy like never before, screaming danger, danger, danger. Call back up for the rest of the heroes, and if I'm wrong, then you can expel me or something. But trust me, I don't think we should go in there. And eventually, Aizawa would look at the direction of Izuku and would say, I hope you're right, kid. As from here, All Might and all of the other pro heroes would be called in, and then they would all be getting ready to enter their area, right? However, Izuku would turn to them and say, I'm coming too. And they would all immediately try to stop him, being like, you're just a kid stay back with the rest of the students however all might would actually back izuku up and say that he's actually at minimum pro hero level so he should actually be allowed to come in if there is a threat plus he was the one that told them about it and they'd say all right kid but at least stay back as from here they enter and it would be at this moment that kuragiri would make himself his presence known he would then teleport the heroes all over the place but izuku and all might would be the ones that would be left behind Kuragiri would then say that it's time to play as they get teleported in front of a bunch of villains and Shigaraki and the Nomu who would easily be waiting for them. Shigaraki would then go on to have a, some sort of a weird monologuing speech where he says that all heroes must die and that corruption runs through these streets, that he hates All Might and that he wishes death upon the heroes. Hero society, it's horrible and you're the root cause of it, All Might. As he would then say, attack him! And all the villains at once would begin rushing in at All Might's direction and Izuku's, mind you. 
as they would all try to beat them. However, Izuku would go invisible instantly, and All Might using his insane speed and strength would both easily be able to take out all these villains like it was nothing. It would almost be like a morning jog, uh, uh, doing like 10 push-ups. That's how easy it was. However, as soon as this happens, Shigaraki would scratch at his neck like a fiend and be like, It's not fair. It's not fair. No more kill them as the nomu would then come rushing in and he would throw a big paymaker punch at all might which would send him back flying and izuku would then catch all might asking him to be being like be more careful all might suddenly snipe from afar would shoot a bunch of bullets at the nomu as it would immediately begin regenerating and shigaraki would say eh, the nomu has shot the nomu has regeneration and shock absorption you can't kill it and all might would say i can't eh maybe i'll just have to punch it faster than it regenerates and takes the shock absorption and he would blitz in there and begin like just pummeling the nomu deku watching this would blitz in there and help as well and after beating on the nomu for about a minute or so they'd realize that that's not working shigaraki would mock them for the fact that he they didn't listen to him and izuku would say that he may have shock absorption but he doesn't have electricity absorption and he would jump onto the head of the nomu as he would immediately let go all of his maximum levels of electricity onto the nomu's brain splattering it everywhere leading to kurigiri and shigaraki watching in shock and kurigiri immediately covering shigaraki in a thick mist as he would teleport him out of there and all might and deku would reign victorious having defeated the nomu and successfully cleared the usj without anybody getting hurt news of this would go through everywhere and news of how you know dangerous the league of villains is as well as izuku's involvement on taking him out would spread like wildfire people would begin raving about the kid in japan who's just like spider-man might even be some sort of secret love child <laughs> hint hint todoroki no but seriously what would pretty much end up going down after this is that they would be given about one week to just train and do whatever it is that they want on this said week Izuku would pretty much just end up training with um, Katsumi during this entire time and what would end up going down, hold on, let me go back to my script, I, I made this script so many years ago, but just know Deku and Katsumi would kind of like begin flirting more and more as time goes on during this week and eventually on the fourth day, Izuku would finally come clean with Katsumi about how he feels. And Katsumi would kind of blush very hard before then kicking Deku out of her house and sending him a text saying that she'll tell him what she feels tomorrow. She has a little bit of a late night girls talk with her mom and eventually the next day she would ring Izuku's doorbell. He'd be feeling very anxious but when she walks in she would immediately hug Deku and say that she feels the same way but she was just scared of risking the friendship. And Izuku would say what's there to risk as they would immediately embrace and for the first time they would kiss. Eventually, after this, they would finally go back to class after the one week break would be over and they would finally have an established relationship. They would finally be going out. And during this time, what would pretty much end up happening is they go back to school where they're all told about what's going to be happening with the UA Sports Festival and all that stuff. And once that's, a, once that's announced, Izuku would end up easily going through, going to the front and giving out a very enthralling speech with everybody else would be like, whoa, this kid's like, he's awesome. You know, he really knows how to give a speech. And obviously he does. I mean, he's been with Spider-Man for years. He definitely knows how to amp up a crowd. He's seen Spidey do it multiple times. He just had to switch up the language a little bit. However, after that speech, Midnight would come up to the podium and declare the first event, the race. All of them would get set and as soon as it would start, Deku and Katsumi as well as Todoroki would be the main ones in the lead. But eventually Deku using his webs and his super insane speed would be able to pull ahead and be the one that ends up winning the race. Leading to the team of cavalry battle happening and Izuku would end up recruiting Ida and Uraraka with them. Meaning that they end up passing and everybody else in the original who would have passed would still do so. Eventually this leads us to the first 1v1 battle trial and Deku vs Shinso would immediately happen. As soon as Shinso would open his mouth mouth and begin saying things to Deku, Deku would immediately answer back and Shinso would smirk thinking to himself that he's already won. Shinso would say walk off the edge and Deku's body it just doesn't move. It's like his body's just on autopilot similar to what happened in Spider-Man No Way Home and then it just rushes at Shinso and straight hits him with a one-two combo sending Shinso flying out of the arena leading Shinso to be like what? 
and once Deku finally regains consciousness after getting punched one time, Deku would land the next two punches and would, like I said, knock Shinso out, leading Shinso to be like, how? And Izuku would say that he's just lucky. As from here, it would then be announced that his next opponent is Deku versus Todoroki, which would pretty much just be a one-sided slap. Immediately, Izuku would turn on his invisibility, and since Todoroki can't see him, he can't really fight him as well as he probably could otherwise. So Deku would easily be able to just kind of sneak by with Todoroki not realizing that the first iceberg that Todoroki shot at Izuku, Izuku just climbed up the thing, slid down it, and once Todoroki realized what was going on, Deku just shot electricity throughout the entirety of the iceberg, shocking Todoroki because all the stadium was covered in it except for the people watching. So when Deku did that, the ice, I'm not sure if ice conducts electricity, but I know water does. So I'm going to say that in this instance, it conducted electricity and Todoroki got absolutely fried, causing him to be stunned. And then Deku came in and just absolutely grabbed him with his webs before flinging him out of the stadium, leading to Todoroki being completely embarrassed in the second round after having destroyed his first opponent and eventually then having Deku versus Katsumi which would be a one-sided spank. And let me tell you, it was bad. Because Deku, as soon as the battle started, said that he's not going to take it easy on her just because she's his girlfriend. And Katsumi would blow explosions everywhere, saying, I wouldn't wish you to. As from here, she blitzes in and Deku would as well, and she would immediately throw a full power explosion point blank at Deku's face, which Deku would barely be able to dodge before then shooting an ex a web at Katsumi's face, which she would have to rip off. And by the time she would do so, Deku would tie up both of her hands together using his webs as he crawls all around her body tying her up in a gigantic web cocoon and ultimately would then throw her off the ring she would try to break out of the webs but izuku would have like he would have like trip like 30 time wrapped the webs around her so there was absolutely no way she was gonna win and once deku beat her she was like get me out as deku would do so and ultimately, they have like a little bit of a cute moment where the camera zooms in on them and everybody would be like, oh, you know, like they're dating. As from here, Katsumi would be like, shut up. And everybody would be like, wow, like he he's really dating that. But ultimately, what would pretty much end up happening after this is that Izuku would go on and pick his hero name once they returned to class. And Izuku would go with the name Spider-Man, saying that, you know, there's no reason for him not to pick the name. He just picks it in Japanese and the people who know a Spider-Man's name in Japanese would be like yo you can't pick that name but Deku would be like yes I could even Spidey said I could so he picks the name Spider-Man and he would be the Japanese Spider-Man which would be very interesting however for who he's going to be picking for his internship I had a lot of struggle thinking about this like who should Deku realistically pick when it comes to the internship oh yeah right maybe the person that he interned with in America Spider-Man yeah that's the person who he goes to. So after a couple of months of not being with Spider-Man, Izuku would finally return and he would spend a bunch of time with Peter, catching up about everything that's happened. And Peter would even congratulate Izuku on having defeated a bunch of villains in the USJ. He would congratulate him heavily and Izuku would feel very proud knowing that he made Peter proud. Eventually, the radar would go off and Spider-Man would say, get your costume, kid. We got somebody to save. There's a villain on the loose. One of my arch nemesis, you remember Gobby, right? And Izuku would say, uh, him. Looks like this time I finally get to help you fight him, right? And he'd say, yep, don't screw this up, kid. Tossing Izuku a suit that he can have an alternative suit. Not the Miles Morales one, but a different one. And Izuku would wear like a completely black Venom looking suit. Not the Miles Morales one, but a just black Venom looking suit. As he would put it on and Izuku and Spider-Man would both make their way towards the direction of the city. Swinging through, they realized that Goblin was throwing a bunch of explosion pumpkin bombs at the people. And once they would come in, Spider-Man would shoot webs at the Green Goblin's face. Which would then leave the Goblin open for Izuku to shoot webs at the feet or the glider of the Green Goblin. And like, like just completely pull it from underneath his feet. The goblin would fall from a great height but land on an inflatable monkey thing and once he would get up, he would call back his glider towards him. However, as this all would be happening, Peter would come in and land a bunch of blows on the goblin which would cause him to be completely thrown off guard. And it would be at this moment that Dr. Octopus would actually end up arriving out of nowhere from the side of a building, 
jumping down onto Peter, catching him off guard just a bit considering that his spider senses went off slightly late. However, Deku being the absolute G that he is would jump in last second and just invisibility active would throw a punch at Doc Ock who would be confused. His arms can't even see Zuku so they can't go after him and Deku would land punch after punch after punch. And considering that Dr. Octopus is just a regular human, these punches do their damage. Eventually, however, Deku crawls on the back of Doc Ock and shocking the uh, arms that Doc Ock has, the arms would go completely haywire and then go useless as a green goblin would finally get up and throw a pumpkin bomb at Deku, which Deku would be saved from by Spider-Man who would shoot his webs at it, catching the bomb mid-air and fling it back to the goblin, which would be blown up by it and sent flying into a flower shop as Deku and Spider-Man would both fist bump and then the media would go absolutely crazy talking about how Japan very own Spider-Man and this Spider-Man are the perfect duo, saying that maybe they should open their own agency and that Deku could be a sidekick to him someday. Izuku would say that's not a bad idea, and Spider-Man would say it is a bad idea, that he should spread his own wings separately, not to live in his shadow, to be his own hero. Deku agrees with that notion, and eventually they turn these villains in. The next day, another insanely powerful nemesis would make his way, and the one that Deku would end up having to fight off this day would be Venom. He would end up arriving at the very last second before Izuku was about to get on his train, and Venom would come jumping in, having actually taken Aunt May, knowing the secret identity of Peter. Oh, actually, no, nah, I'm not going to say that uh, he knows the secret identity. Let's just say that Venom, actually, nah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, he knows the secret identity, because this is Hero Society, there's heroes all over, so, and, and, and Venom was already a part of Spider-Man, he had that arc, you know, Venom knows who it is, yeah, I'm gonna say that he does know him, and he's captured Aunt May, actually, not nah, not Aunt May, he has captured Gwen Stacy, alright, and because he's captured Gwen Stacy, Spider, or Pete, would definitely want to save her. So he would give her two choices, save Gwen, or you can save a bunch of people, just like the Goblin would have done in the original. Holding two things of web together, holding, you know, Gwen up by like a taxi up in like the highest building as, you know, Spider-Man would just be caught off guard. He'd be like, what do I do? You know, ultimately he decides that he has to save the people and Gwen would be let go as slowly the taxi would begin like breaking apart and Venom would say, tick tock as from here spider-man doing his absolute best trying to save you know these, these 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 people would finally be able to do so however right as he does that a gigantic arm of sand would come in and just clobber spider-man just absolutely destroying him and sending him crashing onto the ground where he would look up and see sandman as a gigantic amount of sand would come in and a hammer would form in his arm he would slam it down on a peter and peter would dodge out of the way However, from the corner of his eye, he would notice that Venom was coming at him and would come in and scratch Spider-Man in the chest before then sending him flying into a building, which would then be covered in sand and he would begin like kind of like uh, beginning to like be taken over like it was quicksand however from out of nowhere a random kid would jump into the scene jumping on top of venom's back and absolutely going on to shock him completely venom would be thrown off guard by the power that this kid is displaying and after grabbing a hold onto him and throwing him away venom would finally have been able to take him off of him Izuku from here would be thrown into a metal pole which would slightly like damage his arm and then he would finally get back up as Venom would go over to throw a couple more blows at him and Deku would dodge out of the way using his um using his superhuman reflexes as well as his spidey sense or his tingle to absolutely outplay venom venom and himself would go at it for a minute before izuku using a superior strength of of which peter has would be able to clobber um venom on equal levels and equal footings that they would and as this would be happening spider-man would use a water hydrant to just break it and shoot a massive amount of water at sandman taking him out leading spider-man and deku to both end up facing off against venom who would ultimately with the tag team duo of spiders would easily easily be taking out leading us into the next part of the story which is going to be covered by the absolute legend Izukage now I'm gonna leave everything up to him and he's gonna tell you the rest of what if Deku was Miles Morales hope you enjoy so first things first if you missed part one head over to Zether's channel for that he left you guys on a cliffhanger so that's where I'm gonna be picking up 
So Izuki hears his mom coming up the stairs. He's freaking out at this point. You know, he quickly put back on his clothes and so does Katsumi. And you know, his first instinct is to hide under his bed, but it's too low. And at this point, Inko is like knocking at the door. Izuku, you okay in there? I'm coming in. And he takes Katsumi and uses his webs to stick her to the roof. And he runs over to his desk and Inko walks in. You know, she sees him using his computer. You know, she says hi and you know, he says he's just browsing YouTube, checking out some uh, whatevers. You know, he says he likes Izukage. I wonder why. So yeah, you know, she doesn't really want to disturb him that much. So she just leaves. You know, she takes a quick glance around the room and sees nothing. So she heads back down. So when she walks off, Izuku lets off this heavy sigh of relief. And after that, he takes Katsumi down and they have a good laugh about it. So fast forward to the next day at school and they walk into class holding hands. You know, they don't really care about like they don't really care about showing off their relationship they, it's really no secret after what happened at the sports festival if you remember that so Aizawa comes in later and he says they need to be you know they need to be assessed on what they've learned from their internships so the rescue training race happens and and Izuku using his web swinging alone is enough but combined with the speed and agility he easily makes it to All Might way before anyone else and All Might is amazed and a bit proud you know he had a hand in training Izuku so like you know he kind of felt like a proud father so during this school week uh, class 1A had their final exams and to study Izuku and Katsumi would study at the library or something not wanting to be you know have a close call with his mama ever again so you know they're playing it safe so the written parts of the exams go pretty well for both of them with Izuku actually coming first in the class and Katsumi second you know this made Momo almost like this uh, can I speak this made Momo like almost have a heart attack like not seeing herself in first anymore you know just it's and she's always been that her entire life so <laughs> it's freaking her out so yeah so to the fighting portion of the final exams, I would go over everyone's fight but that's gonna take way too long and really boring cause it wouldn't really change. So let's get into what you guys really want to see and that's Izuku and Katsumi versus All Might. So they actually devised a plan this time before rushing straight at All Might. You know, Izuku grabs Katsumi and they go on top of a, a building you know, waiting for him to pass by and as soon as he does, you know, they look down and see All Might uh, walking by. Izuku shoots his webs trying to restrain All Might but he just busts through and he throws a Detroit smash at the two. But Katsumi you know, flies off dodging it and Izuku jumps down. While in the air Katsumi does a bunch of explosions spinning around flying towards All Might and hits him with a powerful explosion. You know you know this as her house or impact so. Uh, while he's dazed Izuku goes in for a punch and no, it lands and All Might goes flying because this is like 70% of uh, one for all. So All Might, after those two, he is like knocked out, if not really badly injured at this point. So they cuff him and everybody is like cheering like, oh my god, they just beat All Might, like the number one hero, these kids. And there were people recording on their phones, they send it around and it's spreading hella quick. So. After the uh, final exams, you know, they're getting recognized a lot more than, than after the sports festival. You know, that recognition is huge. So the little break they have, uh, uh, so the little break they have to get supplies for the training uh, camp, you know, Izuku doesn't get approached by Shigaraki. One, because you know, he has uh, spidey senses, so he would pick up on the danger if he even gets near to him and two they're basically celebrities at this point so there's always people crowding around them so yeah they got a um, huge clout boost especially izuku first being trained by spider-man now this yeah so the f so to the forest training arc uh they get on the bus to the camp and it's like a five hour bus ride you know the class they're playing some games you know other fun stuff to do on the bus and when Katsumi gets tired, she, you know, she sleeps on Deku's lap and Mineta is just in the back looking like, You're so lucky Midoriya. And he's just crying. But yeah. So, uh, apart from that, they get to the like cliff edge. And everyone thinks it's just like a rest stop to st stretch or whatever. And since they're, 
you know, since they're on the side of a cliff, they wouldn't expect this is where the camp is. So the wild wild pussycats show up and uh, nobody knows them but Izuku. And he was about to point out that they're rescue heroes, but before he even could, uh, Pixie Bob sends a landslide, sending everyone down into the forest. And you no, know, they fend off the monsters pretty well, especially with Izuku and Katsumi's help. You know, they clear it in under an hour. And you no, know, they walk to the camp, barely any scratches on them. And Pixie Bob is looking like, how how did you pass like all my monster, all my creatures? And Azawa then like looks at Pixie Bob's and said, "Hey, you see those two over there? Yeah, those two don't don't take them lightly. <laughs> They've had like hero like pro hero training, so be careful around those two." So Pixie Bob is like Pixie Bob, you know she he, she knows all my uh, all might. <laughs> she knows Aizawa isn't a Joker, so she takes it in good faith, and you know they go to cook, and uh, the uh, encounter with Kota still happens, but. As he goes to punch Izuku in the nuts, his spidey sense is kicking and he dodges it. <laughs> Whoa there, you almost cost Katsumi her kids. And Katsumi's like, what? No, and she's just blushing, like, blushing like really red. And as, uh, Izuku just begins laughing. So so while they're eating, uh, Izuku realizes that the kid isn't around anymore. So he goes looking for him and finally finds him like sitting uh, at the edge of like this cliff and you know, he takes some food to him, but you know, Kota you know, is having his old sob thing, and he's like, I, I, don't, I don't want it, I don't want to associate with you heroes. And uh, Izuku was gonna say something, but he's just, he's just gonna leave him to himself. So he goes back, and you know, they have their uh, their baths, like they bathe, and Minato tries looking over, but Izuku just yanks him back with his spidey webs back into the hot springs. He's like, nope, you, you're you not seeing what's over there. <laughs> Only I get to see that. You know, he's always talking about Katsumi. So so the next day, Izuku, um, you know, Izuku and everyone else in class A begins their training. Izuku mainly training his uh, voltage outputs, like how many, yeah, it's self-explanatory really, how many volts he can output at once. So. He gets to work on that. Uh, Katsumi still does the same thing she does in canon and so does everyone else. So by the end of the day, you know, after all their training, everybody's completely exhausted. Um, I can't remember what they did, but there were some people doing like regular class stuff. So they still do that. And um, oh yeah, the people who like fail their ex uh, final exams and stuff. So they still do their class stuff to get up on their grades. So when everybody was uh, sitting around having their dinner, you know, they had to make it this time. Izuku actually making the food, you know, along with Katsumi. And they, if I could describe it to you, well, I could. But this food is probably the best thing you'll ever have. Just saying. So while they're cooking and everyone's eating and having a good time chatting, and they see the forest on fire, you know, they go outside and take a closer look. And, you know, they see blue flames and they get a telep pathy message i guess you can call it from mandalay and she's like yo this is a villain attack take this seriously and izuku his mind is immediately goes to kota like he doesn't see him around he's probably at his spot you know he dashes over there uh, katsumi tries stopping him but he tells her to stay here so he rushes over there and sees a uh, muscular like holding kota by the neck and he's like bro hold on let me let me go on a tangent real quick why's this big guy Pick, picking on this little kid like bro pick, like get on someone your own size jeez all right whatever so izuku sees kota being like strangled so he uh wraps some webs around him and yanks him towards him before muscular could do any damage and muscular is like give me him back i need to finish his lineage and izuku is like what the fuck? you know izuku you know, he tells kota to go uh, but you know he's af afraid he not he's not going anywhere so izuku starts getting in a fight with a uh, uh, muscular they're trading blows izuku using around 50 percent of all uh you know using his strength it's comparable to around 50 percent of one for all and they're throwing good hands until muscular starts using more of his muscles and uh, you know he begins going on his whole villain tangent saying the whole reason why he's here you know he's here to capture tokoyami this time because in the original the whole reason they were there was to capture Bakugo was because 
in the sports festival, he was acting like a villain. You know, since this is Katsumi now, she's pretty chill, so she didn't act all crazy, but they saw the potential in Tokoyami's quirk, the darkness in his quirk. Maybe they could recruit him to the dark side, so that's their whole plan, and they actually want to kill Izuku and Katsumi. They see them as the biggest threat to their whole plan. So Izuku is uh, throwing good hands with muscular, but he's way faster than him. Like, uh, sometimes he punches him and he crawls on his arm, punching him in the face and electrocuting him. Like, he holds his head in his hands and just sends thousands of volts through him. You know, thinking this will you know, get him, he goes over to Kota, but this guy is like he's rising from the dead. He gets up every time, his muscles growing even bigger, and Izuku had to go all out. He used a... Uh, electricity amplified a hundred percent comparable to a hundred percent of one for all punch so electricity coursing through his body he punches uh, muscular his uh, muscles actually working against him absorbing all of the voltage and frying them frying this guy making him look like a piece of burnt toast so after that you know izuku his his left arm is broken so he grabs koto with his right and you know he uh runs over to mandalay and she does her whole telepathy thing, telling everyone they have permission to use their quirks. And Izuku goes looking for Katsumi because of what Muscular said, you know, they're out to kill them. So he's running through the woods and he finally sees her, but it's too late. Uh, Katsumi this time was actually fighting Mr. Compress and since she didn't know anything about his quirk, she got a bit reckless and wreck she got a bit reckless and got caught in his orb thing, yeah, his quirk. And Izuku th seeing this got so mad, the, like the lightning began shooting out of his body and he goes and blitzes Mr. Compress, but he was already through one of Kurigiri's portals. And Izuku at this point was boiling with rage. No, I was too weak. He sent out all the electricity he had built up into an explosion like uh not really an explosion but it exploded the ground under him leaving a massive crater you know he's that angry he keeps punching the ground and momo goes up to him she you know she tries calming him down she says well we can still save her we have this tracking device and you know she was gonna get the heroes to help them izuku just snatches the tracking device out of her hands and just swings away to the normal's place and momo's just like rude <laughs> But yeah, anyways, he gets there within like 20 minutes-ish and he busts through the door to see a bunch of like Nomo in tanks and he is pretty disappointed that this wasn't the right place. So like he was obviously going to report this to the police, but that's not his number one priority right now. So he's looking through to see if there's any clues to where their base might be. And as he was about to leave, he sees a portal open up. It was Spinner and he came out with the body of Pixie Bob. You know, because they knocked her out and took uh, her with them. So he blitzes him and kicks him back through the portal. So uh, Spinner was like, uh, like lying on the ground and all the villains look towards him like, oh, how did you get in her hideout? And, you know, Izuku sees Tokoyami and Katsumi tied to chairs. And he shoots some webs towards uh, all the villains in the room, sending uh, electric shock through the webs and... You know, this fried some of them actually, like putting some of them near death because they don't have resistance like the others. So he goes and frees Tokoyami and Katsumi. And when he does, you know, she runs up and hugs him tight, like almost killing him, like almost killing my man. And, you know, but the moment was sadly ruined by all the, like, all the villain's body begin, like, being covered with this sludge. And, uh, you know, all the villains just disappeared like through a portal and all for one stepped out of like one of those sludge portals. And at the same time, the heroes finally arrive with All Might busting through the villain's base saying, I am here. And All Might, he's not smiling when he sees All for one. You know, he tells Izuku in a serious tone, get out of here, kid. The first punch is mine. And Izuku was gonna object, but he sees the look on All Might's face and says, Yo, you do you, just don't kill him, you know. And, you know, All Might wants him to take him down right now. He goes all out. He charges up a punch and says, Go beyond. Plus. Ah! 
He sends all for one flying out of the hideout and everyone around was cheering but All Might felt a pit in his stomach. You know, all for one was uh, on like lying on the ground. He seemed to be unconscious, but he looks over to him. All Might looks over to all for one and you know, you hear this. You think you can take me down that easily? And uh, you know, all for one begins standing up and he's like, don't worry, All Might. Once I take you down, I'll take your successor with me. That girl. Yes, I know. You know, Alpha One here. Uh, not Alpha One. All Might hearing this, you know, he gets a serious look on his face, saying, "Like, how did he know?" Well, it's kind of obvious. Explosions and super strength, but whatever. You know, and Izuku, he's like, "All right, I'm gonna step in." He steps in and punches Alpha One with like 70%. Uh, strength of one for all and he sends him flying but Katsumi comes up behind all for one launches an explosion in his back but little did she know he had a shock absorption quirk so the explosion basically did nothing he whips around and grabs uh, uh, Katsumi by the he reaches around and grabs Katsumi by the neck and she's flailing around and she like hugs onto his arm and twists it like almost like basically breaking his arm and she escapes and Izuku comes back again. He wraps All For One in his webs and sends electricity through it, but All For One was still standing. He grabs Izuku's webs and yanks him towards him and punches him, but that wouldn't keep him down for long. All Might gets into the fight and sends a bunch of punches towards uh, All For One and, and actually use his United States of Smash earlier this time, so it's not as draining, but still was a lot of power behind it so he crushes all for one's head into the ground and <sighs> gg for all for one i guess so like the tvs were recording this and they saw how you know the these u.s students played a, a crucial role in this takedown and you know this spread really fast and somebody who saw this was you know spider-man you know he was watching the news so back to Japan, you know, people were cheering and no one was really injured. So they won't really have that much backlash for having no hero license. But hey, speaking of hero licenses, that's the next arc. So uh, so after like a day of rest, you know, a lot of people go into the hospitals. Um, All Might does get approached by his uh, cop friend, you know, the dog mutt thing. You know, he says that he can't he, he can't have US students running around taking down villains, but you know, he can't he can't lie. They did do a good job, but the law's the law. So they do end up having to go to the uh, provisional licenses exam. Can I speak? Provisional license in the exams. And you know, they meet the uh, students from she oh, what's the name? Yo, give me a second. Ah uh, yes, so they meet. Ah uh, yes, so they meet all the students from uh, Shiketsu High, and you know they have the wind dude, the guy that makes uh, the earthquake things. So all of that happens, and in the fight, uh, it's pretty long. I don't remember exactly what happens, but hey, everyone in class only passes, and uh, the wind dude. Uh, wait well, you no, know. but hey, yeah, everyone in class only passes. So Izuku getting his provisional license, he sends pictures to uh, you know, all his close friends, uh, including his, not his close friends, his family, including his mom, All Might, and Spider-Man. And he actually calls Spider-Man, you know, they talked about, uh, you know, what's been going on, just catching up for a bit, because they haven't talked in a while. So that happens, and Izuku and Katsumi decide to, you know, celebrate this accomplishment, you know, her also getting her provisional license in, uh, her actually getting her provisional license as well so they you know they go out and have have a good time you know they eat they go have uh, I don't know whatever thing you do for fun <laughs> I don't know bowling I guess yeah just do some really fun stuff and by the end of it they actually ended up going to Katsumi's place you know her parents weren't home so it's the perfect time <laughs> So, you know, they celebrate a bit in the bedroom, if you know what I mean. And yeah, that goes down. And, you know, the next day, Izuku wakes up. You know, he has uh, Katsumi still on his chest. And he's just like, I'm that 
I'm, I'm that guy. <laughs> like, I'm that guy, bro. Who else can wake up to this? So, uh, after that, they ended up uh, having to go back to school. And this is the day where the big three came to Class 1A. You know, after their introductions, Mirio challenges everyone in the class. And, you know, everyone was just like, you against all of us. <laughs> okay, you may be in this big three or whatever, but you're not going to take us all down. Fast forward five minutes, and he took everyone down. <laughs> so they went to the fighting area, and Mirio just pieced up everyone in class 1A, easy as they did in canon. But Izuku and Katsumi were staying to the back, you know, watching his moves to see basically how his quirk works or get an idea of what it is. And if they paid off, they had a decent idea. So after he took down everyone, they rushed in, and Izuku using his web shoots at Mirio, but it goes right through him. And Mirio goes on the ground trying to punch Izuku, but when he resurfaced, he was gone. And he also lost track of Katsumi, but she was behind him and shot an explosion into his face, but he faced through it again. He materialized and tried punching Katsumi, but Izuku punched Mirio, but he didn't know where he was. Izuku was actually invisible. And yo, you can't dodge what you can't see. So OP strat. So and since he can't be intangible for really long because he needs air to breathe so while he's getting like punched from random directions he's trying to predict it but he can't you know uh, in his confusion Katsumi sends a explosion right in his back causing Mirya to fall over like barely conscious and you know uh, they have to take him to the and you know they have to take him to recovery girl and in recovery girl's office she was cussing Katsumi and Izuku for going that hard on the poor boy. So they go into Mira's like bed area, you know, to talk to him. They thought he would be mad, but when they slide off the curtain, they see this man doing jumping jacks, push-ups, the whole works. And, you know, they were surprised at his, at his enthusiasm. So when Mirio was finished, he complimented them on their teamwork and raw strength in general and asked if they'd want to work under his master. You know, they asked who's that and they and he goes on to explain about Sir Naitai and his agency and that it's, you know, he's a pretty chill guy if if you're funny. And and Izuku is like Pff, funny. <laughs> Funny's my middle name. So so they ended up going to Sir Naitai like two days later with Mirio, like Katsumi and uh, Izuku ended up going. And they enter his office and, you know, they, uh, and, you know, they, uh, well, I'm not sure about Katsumi, but Izuku actually managed to make him laugh. And, you know, he was in such a good mood. He was like, yo, I'll pass both of you. Why, why not? You know, that goes down and the Sir Naida gives them like the, basically the, how, how things work around here. And, you know, he tells him about uh, Chisaki and his whole organization. So when they're going on patrols, if they ever see him, don't engage. So later that day, Mirio, Katsumi, and Izuku actually end up getting some uh, patrols in. Um, you know, while patrolling, they stop a few robbers. You know, just some petty theft. So yeah, nothing too serious. They just handed it over to the like local police. So when they were walking, they you know Izuku is walking, and this girl bumps into his uh, leg. You know this little girl and he looks over and sees Aerie. You know, he sees she's all bandaged up and you know this made him a bit worried. So he picks her up and you know he's asking like are you okay? And she just looks scared. She's like uh uh, uh okay, okay. like she's trying to talk but you know as she was gonna say something uh Chisaki comes up. You know, Izuku sees the bird mask and immediately tenses up. So he's like, you know, Chisaki says Oh, Eri, why do you keep running? And then he looks towards Izuku. I'm sorry for my daughter. She's just a bit reckless sometimes. You can see that by the bandages. And Izuku gets the weirdest vibe off this guy. And he's like, your daughter, huh? He's like, yeah. Come on, Eri, let's go home. You don't want these kind heroes to kick the bucket. Wait, no, he wouldn't say that, but... He just says some menacing stuff. <laughs> I can't really think of anything. But yeah, he says some some really menacing stuff. And and Izuku, he he doesn't feel safe giving Eri back to this guy. 
So he hands Eri over to uh, Katsumi and he's like, watch her for me. And he turns to uh, Overhaul. You know, I keep, I keep, I'm, I'll just call him Overhaul for now and instead of switching between Shizaki. Uh, sh I can't even say it. So I'm sticking with Overhaul. So he's, he says, uh, uh, what are you going to, what are you planning to do with that girl? And he's like, uh, just give me her already. And he takes off his gloves and touches the ground. Spikes lift up, but, you know, they all dodge. It's not really that fast. And, you know, Katsumi uh, runs off to, what's it called? Ba Katsumi runs off to the agency with uh, Eri, while Izuku and Miyuro are engaged with combat with Overhaul. You know, they really don't want to do this, especially in the streets, because Overhaul's quirk is really destructive. You know, he's just de de destroying buildings like nothing and uh, trying to attack them. So, and whenever Izuku tries like wrapping his webs around him, he just dissolves them. So, Izuku throws a electricity blast at Overhaul and oh, like to be honest, Overhaul isn't particularly fast, isn't particularly strong. He just has his quirk. So, he does, he can't escape this move and he gets electrocuted and you know he falls over but one of his uh, henchmen comes grabs him and he runs off i'll say he has like a super speed quirk so he runs off with overhaul unconscious and they go back to the base but little did any of them know izuku you know he's intellectual he develops these little he developed this little uh, tracking device i think spider-man in the movies actually had something like this uh he pins it on the henchman and you know he runs off so they let him go and you know they're looking around and they see like two buildings missing just completely like turn into sand and they're like I don't really know I'm gonna explain this one so you know they go back to Sir Nida's office and they see um they you know they see Eri you know they wrapped her up in a blanket and she's saying let me go back he he's gonna kill you and Izuku is just you know he's comforting her he's saying no we're we're here to protect you and you know, Eri, you know, she seems happy, but, you know, she's afraid of what Overhaul is going to do to them. So, Sir Nidai touches Eri and sees her whole, uh, like, how she got there. And he sees all the experiments they've been doing on this poor girl. And Sir Nidai, he's, he's overcome with emotion. Like, he was like, yeah, Overhaul, like, drug lord or whatever. Really bad guy. But seeing this, he's like, we got to get him. We got to get him. Stop everything. Get him. So, so Sir Nida is just overcome with emotion and he tells them what he sees and they're all like they really want to take overhaul down now. So they still collaborate with other agencies and get the raid plans together and they raid the hideout and you know they know exactly where it is because uh, Sir Nida sees into like sees where Eri came from and you know Izuku has his uh, tracking device so he can track specifically where the place is. So using that information they raid the building and uh, yeah they raid the building and uh, everything goes basically the same um everyone gets into their own fights uh fat gum and kirishima uh tamaki and who was he fighting these like three gang members it comes down to mirio and izuku versus overhaul and uh, mirio would never uh and Mirio would never lose his quirk because he loses his quirk protecting Eri and with Eri out of the equation, you know, he can dodge as freely as he wants. So they are dodging and, you know, they go all out on this guy. You know, Mirio is phasing in and out, punching him and, you know, they made sure to take down his, their henchmen first, his henchmen first. And this fight is going on and their overhaul is really badly losing. So he's... Uh, he goes over to one of his unconscious henchmen and does the same thing as Cannon, like fuses with him and becomes this giant monster thing. And so Overhaul becomes this giant monster thing and Mirio and Mirio and uh, uh, uh bruh. Mirio and Mirio and Izuku like are trying to figure out a way to like do this, but Izuku is saying you know this is for area and he just he basically powers up he goes full strength like basically equal a hundred percent to of one for all so he kind of enters a similar form 
as a um, as in canon but instead of like flying around he's swinging because you know i don't want to spoil it if you don't know but yeah he's swinging around and with basically a hundred percent of one for all and these electricity blasts he manages to take down this massive overhaul so the cops finally come in and you know they handcuff overhaul and all his henchmen and yeah all that goes down and eri was like watching this and izuku made sure to beat the heck out of overhaul just for eri so eri was watching this entire fight unfold like on live tv because there's always cameras like what uh, recording all these fights so she's watching and she's satisfied seeing the person who's literally made her life like a living hell get you know the uh justice he deserves so overhaul gets taken in all these lackeys get taken in and yeah that's pretty much it for that arc so for the gentle criminal arc to be honest i'm gonna be with you i don't know a lot about like this fight because like all the other fights in my hero i've watched probably five times five to ten times depending on how good it is but this i, I, I probably even ha haven't watched it in its entirety so uh, uh all right yeah so they get prepared for the uh, school festival and you know everyone's preparing their supplies and stuff so when izuku is asked to go get some rope he does and he passes like the tea shop that gentle and la brava came out of so first izuku uses his web to stick la brava to the ground so because he doesn't know what her quirk is so he sticks her to the ground and this makes uh gentle like mad like how dare you touch her so he like goes on the offensive and bounces towards uh, izuku like kicking him in the chest but izuku got those reflexes he dodges and ends up kicking gentle to the ground and he shocks him a bit and you know gentle you know he gets the boost from la brava's quirk yeah i think it's from yeah he gets the boost from la brava's quirk but this still wasn't enough enough especially by being basically as strong as all my izuku whips <laughs> gentle so he wraps him up and you know shocks him some more just to make sure he stays down and he turns in gentle and la brava so the festival goes on without any interruption it was actually really good and eri actually does smile you know the brightest smile she've ever had in her life and and this struck something in izuku's heart it just had a warm feeling so you know this was really good and katsumi she's been all over like she's been all over eri you know she loves her like her own child so Hey, with that said, um, this seems like a good place to end it. So, hope you guys enjoyed my part two for this. Make sure, well, it's the end of the video, so you obviously watch part one. But still, you know, if you guys like the video, like. If you like my content in general, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next what if.